lady in the trap, yeah, the ladies get in the trap with their fellas and they hold them down and she wanted them, you know what I mean? She wanted the girls gonna hold you down. You smell me? You feel that, don't you? Feel that, don't you? Today we have with me in the trap uh, an entrepreneur, a creative, literally wears so many different hats. His name is Taz and he runs Internet Money. How's it going? Uh, it's going really well, thank you. Taz Taylor, my apologies. Where you at? Um, I'm in LA. How are you doing? Yeah, man, I'm doing great. I'm actually in Malta right now, which is a Mediterranean island uh, where my family's from. So I guess I get to have a little break away from London city. city. Get to relax. Are you in the office? No, I'm in, I'm in my office at my house right now. So I'm just... Oh, amazing. Yeah. True entrepreneur. I guess you work 24 hours, pretty much. Uh, yeah, something like that. Very, very few hours being spent on sleep around here right now. Exactly. And we are, of course, talking about uh, a brand new project that you've put together, uh, an amazingly well put together project. Thank you. Uh, it's called Be Before the Storm. Ironically, we just had a storm here. So I guess it's after the storm right now. It's still before the storm in LA. We, we haven't seen rain here in like uh, six months, it feels like. So it's still before the storm here. You're in the future. <laughs> Well, after the storm could be, you know, the follow up, right? The the sophomore album. Yeah, I think that's what everybody's kind of expecting it to be. But I don't. I think I'm just gonna throw some random name out there and be like, "Yep, this is the album." <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we need the storm. I guess we need yeah. the, the actual like meat and potatoes of it. But why did you decide to call it before the storm? Um, it had it had more so to do with like uh, the coronavirus and everything. I was supposed to do like a big internet money festival this year and had like a whole bunch of big stuff planned, but. Um, I just had to move it to like next year because obviously coronavirus. So I was like, I still want to put out a project. And I guess like the storm was referencing for like next year, like everything crazy I had planned. But, you know, it kind of turned into being the storm this year. So I'll, I'll take it. We're here. What does an internet money festival look like? It looks like the cover of the album. That's what it was supposed to be. So, wow. Yeah. No one knows that. Where was the planned location? Uh, it was going to be in my hometown, Jacksonville, Florida. I was in talks to try to do it at like the, the Jacksonville Jaguar Stadium, which, by the way, they're the official football team of the UK. You know what I mean? So I did not know that. Yeah, I'm so, they're, so they're, not a football fan. They're the NFL team of the UK. So, Oh, amazing. <laughs> We're out here. Listen, how, how many people does it take to put a festival together? Uh, quite a bit, but, you know, we're, we were working towards it, but it, everything happened. So we'll see. Yeah. I, guess, I guess I'll find out the real answer uh, next year. That's right. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a ton of adjustments and, you know, all sorts of, you know, you have to kind of play around with with the restrictions that I, I feel like are going to be implied for the foreseeable future. At least, you know, yeah, I at mean, least we can do is this is what like normal life feels like now. There's not going to feel any different. This is always going to there's always going to be people that's afraid of stuff. And I don't know. this is just the new normal now. That's actually very true. A lot of like paranoia, anxiety, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's wild. What would you think of a drive through festival? I've seen like some clubs in the UK have been announcing like these drive-in clubs where you can actually buy tables and pop bottles in your yeah. car. What do you think of that? That's It's crazy. I don't know. I kind of, I feel like it kind of takes away from the experience. It's like, it's like diet, like trying to be on a diet and still eating like fast food every day. Like if you're going to, be on it. You might, if, if you're not supposed to be around people, you're not supposed to be at concerts right now. That's how I feel. Uh, it, yeah, you're completely removing the whole point. Yeah, of, yeah. I, of a I festival feel like vibe. I feel like people should have did like some VR thing or something and made it cool, where people actually feel like they're there as opposed to like being in a car or something. It's so so stupid. Also, you you're you're actually like relying on first of all people having a car like. A city like London, not many people actually own a car. Like, it's so expensive to run the insurance, the, the the parking. So, you know, it's a city, it's a public transport city, really, or Ubering city. So you're relying on people having a car, and then you might be the friend that's left out of the group that can't fit in the car. Like, that's really annoying. That's what H was talking about in his song. Is it really that expensive in the UK to get insurance? So they can't insure me. <laughs> oh, yeah. H, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 I fuck with H. Oh, for real? Have you guys had conversations? Yeah, he's been he's been to LA. We've, we we we've uh, he's came to my house, but I'm trying to put him on the second second album for sure. That it's makes my boy sense. Now. Shout out to H. What's his name? Name Ad 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 X. Ad X. Shout out to Ad X. Yeah. Label you, you mate, right? H. Yeah, label mate. Yeah, something like that. You can say that. <laughs> 
Listen, for the new listeners who, you know, not don't really know about internet money as an infrastructure, can you give us a quick brief of what internet money is and the inception of it? Yeah, so internet money is just like a, uh, a collective of producers. I guess that's what most people would call us. And we kind of are a label where, where an artist, we do kind of everything and kind of say where one thing would be the opposite of what internet money is because it's just like we're, we're, uh, we're a Swiss army knife. There's nothing we can't do. You know what I mean? Um, we, we, we broke artists. We broke Trevor Daniel. We broke Juice World, Lil Tecca, Ian Dior. Um, we kind of just built and developed all these artists. Um, yeah, and that's kind of where we got our like foot in the door. And that's how a lot of people know about us. They, they probably hear us on like a Juice World song or a Lil Tecca song or something like that. But for the first time in a, ever, we're, the artists are now giving us the hits instead of us giving them the hits. You know what I mean? Exactly, um, exactly. It's, it's a good little I'm, scratch my back, I scratch yours situation. Well, I actually wanted to get into this conversation because... At what point, so, you know, you were very instrumental with breaking artists, but at what point when they get bigger, they get more traction from people that have huge bags and, you know, you're in this sort of situation where you're in limbo of whether the artist really rocks with you or, you know, at what point does it get really tricky in the business side of things? Like you were really there at the start, but then business starts to come to play. Um... <laughs> All the, time. I, I, all the time. I just think that you can't take it personal. You know what I mean? Like there's a difference between uh, people kind of insulting you on a personal level and then people just trying to look out for their best interests. You know what I mean? Mm. Everybody's just kind of trying to look out for themselves in this. Um, but there's definitely people who just understand and support and respect, you know, the process that comes with us, what comes with it. And that's all I can kind of yeah. for. There's people who obviously like disrespect us and do stuff like that, but they don't they don't last very long. Yeah, no, it's true. It's it comes with the game. Like this is really like a dog eat dog game, and yeah, yeah, if you're not really, prepared really for it, yeah, really competitive. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess you've been a testimony to having the gift of foresight, as you said. You were so in the early stages of these artists. Would you say that making money online was always going to be your path? Obviously, you named the collective Internet Money, so it's about you know making money online, and it is our generation. Like it really represents our generation. Was that always going to be your path? Um, nah, you're big brain thinking right now. I ain't never thought that far ahead about it, but I mean, it makes sense. It sounds good. You know what I mean? In reality, it's just like we're a bunch of people who really didn't have like a path. You know what I mean? Really like knew what we wanted to do. That's kind of why we made music on the internet and then we just just made something out of nothing I guess and now we're here and so I mean if, if I was to sit here and I was like a real like uh egotistical person or something I'd be like oh yeah we always knew all along but in reality like we had, we had no clue <laughs> we had no but clue. more so not even re in regards to music would you say that you were always like that was going to be your career you wouldn't you weren't going to go out and get a job do you understand where I'm coming it, no, from yeah I mean I just feel like I dropped out in the seventh grade so it's like right. I couldn't get a job even if I wanted to. So this is just what stuck. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm underqualified to flip burgers at the local McDonald's, Nando's. Is that what they ask for? <laughs> they ask for certification? <laughs> yeah. You could be underqualified for jobs. So I'm, I'm like the most underqualified. I don't even know division. You know what I mean? So it's like, which I don't know what you need to know division for, for flipping burgers at Nando's. I mean, I know it's a chicken spot. <laughs> Nando. <laughs> <laughs> they do have a good burger though, like a good butterfly chicken burger. Oh, That's God, really good. That? She's she's <laughs> over here like, oh, so good. Oh. Have you been Taz? Have you been to the know. UK yet? I've never I've never been to the UK. I just found out I'm actually from the UK. So oh my, I gotta go visit. I gotta go visit my homeland. <laughs> Wait, you know exactly which part of the UK your ancestors come from? No, no idea. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my last name. My last name Snodgrass. So like. My whole life, my whole family, my whole, this is, does it just start with me? My whole family, my whole family thought we were Native American until I found out what a 23andMe is. And I took the 23andMe, I'm thinking I'm Native American this whole time. And it's like, you're 99.2% European. I'm like, what the f is this? Like, no. So you, the, <laughs> the, the, the script got flipped completely. Yeah, but, but you know, we're out here. I'm very, I'm very hip on UK things. You know, yeah. I can't wait to come to the UK. It's, it's great. I feel like there are tons of collaborators waiting to work with you. Uh, Yeah, on that, I don't really know as much. Like, I'm not as hip with the UK stuff. I know H. He's five. Yeah. Where's he from, Manchester? He's from Manchester. I got it right this time. 
Yeah. Yeah, he's a, a bit north of, of, of London. I always say Chelsea and they're like, no, mate, it's not Chelsea, mate. It's Manchester. Definitely not Chelsea, mate. <laughs> oh my God, you and the British accent can yeah. pull it off. Like, yeah, you really look like you're from the UK. Wow. <laughs> I look like... All right, yeah. So people who, like, I don't know if you know about 10K Projects, but, like, Molly yeah. and Elliot, they're from the UK. So Molly has always said, I look like I'm from the UK. And it's always been, like, a joke. And then now... So then you put the accent on, and then it's that's it. It's a wrap. It, Change your passport. Yeah. We bit. Sorry, right, mate. <laughs> it's all right, mate. I love it, Mo. I'm definitely looking forward to your collaborations with UK artists. I feel like there's so many that you can tap in with, and you seem like you know you've got your finger on the pulse. So, so why not? And you know, you've tapped into different sounds on this project. You, the the track with Sway Lee and Future. Of course, we kept it with that island vibe, almost like an unforgettable part two, given those R&B melodies over it. Have you ever thought into diving deeper into those ponds and tapping in with like a Popcorn or a Wizkid for Afrobeats or even more like Asian artists and it other European crazy. artists? I was, I actually wanted to get Wizkid on thrusting. That was like, when I made it, I was like, yeah. But, Facts. you know, Sway kind of set the vibe. I mean, you kind of can't tell Sway what to do. He was just in there and he's like, I want to make some stuff like this. And it's like, all right, Sway, well, we're, we're going on the vibe with it. That's what we're doing. So, yeah, you know, I, we, I guess the good thing about Aaron Money is the fact that we are so talented and we can do any genre of music. So I guess just being in with those type of artists and they kind of just set the mood and the vibe. And we're just like, all right, well, we're running with this. You know what I mean? I wanted to make it some yeah. international music and get Wizkid on it or Lunai or something like that. But you know, it just ended up making sense to put Future on it and just go crazy. No, absolutely. And yeah. again, Future is also versatile. People like to categorize him as the trap artist, but he's way more than that. And he, he's written some of the best melodies in, in yeah, hip-hop R&B of our generation. Artists. Yeah, he's one of the best pop artists of the past de decade. Pop artist. Yeah. Yeah, no, for real. When we were doing Thrusting, like there was a point in a song that I told Sway, I was like, yo, maybe you should say it a little different. And like, that was the first time Sway was in with me. So so he didn't want to be like, fuck no. But he was just like, no. <laughs> I was like, go do your thing, bro. Just do your thing. Well, I guess it's hard for you, though, because you are the orchestrator. You're a producer yourself. So it's yeah. very hard to take a step back. And I know that artists can have some sort of ego. And like, there's not much vocal direction happening in this day and age. And I feel like it's hard for someone like you, executive producing a project like this, to be hands on sometimes when you're dealing with egos. How have you coped with that? um a lot of times whenever it's just like all right I don't, I don't really like this but i don't because i'm very brutally honest like with sway it was never like that it was just more so him just like bro just give just give me that trust i'm trusting you with and i was like all right cool i get that that's different but there's times where i'm in with artists where they just be like overthinking and not wanting to listen to anything and i'll be like this song is terrible so i'll just leave i'll just leave the studio and just leave my producers there to be honest with you because i know i know if it's gonna be good or if it's not gonna be good whenever we're making it so it's like, if I'm just not really vibing with it, I'm not going to ruin the vibe. I'll just, I'm out. <laughs> Keep it pushing. Like, I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, because I, I, just, I, just, I just pick my battles. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's true. it depends on the day, what day you get me on, I guess. On the flip side, what artist is a breeze to work with? Oh, um, Kid Leroy, great artist, really talented. Doesn't even write, just like gets in there and freestyles. And you're like, all right, well, yeah, look, we'll, just, we'll just go with that. We're good with that. Um, nice. Tekka, obviously. Um, who else was really fire to work with on the project? Golden, 24 Karat Golden. That's my boy. That's my brother. He's one of the best songwriters out there. Um, Mosey, always fun to work with Mosey, of course. Um, <laughs> there's a lot. It's crazy because there's a lot of artists I like working with. It's just I'm so, this album has been so stressful from like a team perspective because you're putting a lot of artists on songs that they wouldn't normally get get on song with or they don't right. get on song with. So it's like, I like working with them, but they were being like an asshole about this one situation. You know what I mean? So I'm like, oh, like it could have been perfect. You could have been the one. But what, what, did it get technical? Like, did people ask you, well, who else is on the project? Like what what track number is my, is my track? No, it, it was never about like what track number or whatever, because it's always like love and there's never no disrespect, but like obviously artists are very egotistical and they don't want to be on songs with other artists. Like they just want it to be themselves nine times out of 10. And I'm like, yo, so I got like so-and-so in this song with so-and-so. And they're like, well, why would you do that? And I'm like, well, why not? Like, it sounds great. And they're like, well, you cut my verse. I'm like, well, bro, 
it's a hit. <laughs> like, it's up. yeah. Yeah. No, we need, we need people like you. Like this game needs people like you where you, you're the decision maker, you're confident about it yeah. and that's it. Like signed, sealed, signed, sealed, delivered. Yeah. You know, that, that's just it. Um, I just feel like I, I hear, whenever I hear people making music, I just hear the final product in my head. And if I don't, if it doesn't become the product that I hear in my head, then it's just like I fall out of love with it so easily. And it's just like, with music especially like a lot of the songs were on the album or just making music in general it's just like if you really fall out of love with it quickly it's just never gonna you, so I've, I've really every song that's on this album like i really really love you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's just like mm -hmm. getting it to that point to where you can listen to it a million times and not get tired of it because we're making 10 to 15 new songs a day you know what i mean so it's like how do you pick 20 songs 17 songs that you're really passionate about it's just, it had to get to that point and taking people off, putting people on the whole process. Yeah. So you don't compromise then with saying, okay, it's not just what I hear in my head, but I need to test it out on the consumer. Do you not do that? Uh, sometimes I'll go like live or on Instagram or Twitter or something like that. Right. But I don't never just like, if I have to put a record out to gauge an audience, it's like, then I need to retire because I feel like I have, I have the ears that like everybody wants to know like what I think on songs. So if I can't do that about my own songs, then like I need to retire. My, I lost my ability. Yeah. I, I look at it like I give people the songs that I want them to have and they just learn to love them. And that may sound cocky to some people, but that's just like, you have to have a certain amount of like cockiness and confidence about the work you do. Like if you go ask any like, you know, sport player, or anything, they, they feel like they're the best at what they do. It's not cocky yeah. or any any rapper, any artist of like, oh, well, I'm the best. You kind of feel like you yeah. have to be. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And life is not like not everything can be a poll where you just decide, you know, what what the <laughs> what's the best and what suits you. I'm sure Diddy, when he was putting out those records and the, those collaborations, there wasn't no like test test group <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to not, test his music. Huh? I mean, it's just at the end of the day, people just you just got to give people that trust and that respect. Like I give artists that trust and that respect when they're in the studio writing or doing their thing. I'm like, all right, well, I'm, I did my part. We're here. I gave you the beat. Let me, let me see what you can do. And if they can't, then it's like, we'll get it done. One of the most um, prominent records on this lemonade, which happens to be obviously the second single with Gunna, Don Tolliver and Nav, one of my favorites, mm -hmm. partially because Don Tolliver absolutely kills and snaps on the, on the hook. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested, why is it the last track and is the lead single? Um, I feel like it's just a good way to end the album, to be honest with you. And I've, I, I I didn't know it was going to be as big as it, it was whenever we did it. But oh. um, it was the first song that I made on the album that I was like, wow, like, this is going to be crazy. Um, so I was just like, it's a good way to end it. Let's just put it last. And then. It ended up being the first single and people were just like, it already got the streams and got the boost out of the way. So by the time people get to it, when they're listening to the album, they don't get tired of it. You know what I mean? They're just yeah. like, oh, I remember this one too. This one's good. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And they're almost like expecting it to continue past 17 tracks <laughs> after they've heard Lemonade, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So if you had to say, what, what track do you have a hunch about taking off um, beyond Lemonade from, the, from this 17 track project? I couldn't, I couldn't even. Another, another really? thing about Lemonade though, that like people don't understand is like this, the album's called Before the Storm. So mm -hmm. it's leading into the storm. The Lemonade's what the next album's going to sound like. Makes sense. Yeah. It's, oh. uh, you see what I'm saying? I see. But you, okay. Cause I like Devastated. I like Somebody. Obviously Somebody was released at the end of last year, yeah. but um, Blast Off is great with Juice World and Trippy. Yeah. I think... And J Lo too. I think Lil Tecca really kills it on J Lo. I yeah, think there's a few it, club records in there. The, the the Juice record's really special for obvious reasons. You know what I mean? We were working on it like right before uh, Juice had passed, and it's just um, yeah, the fact that we were able to still get that song, you know, knowing the circumstances, everything that happened, like it just meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to Nick. Uh, it meant a lot to the whole team. So it's just like probably yeah. the the most personable record on there. You know what I mean? But uh lemonade's the biggest record no option by kevin gates i'm always i'm a big kevin gates fan kevin is like one of my favorite artists of all time especially being from the south you know what i mean like everybody loves kevin gates so i feel like i just had to put that one on there wiz khalifa big wiz fan is always like uh really looked out by giving me that record 
Tekka killed it. You know, you know, yeah. everybody did their thing. Yeah, one thing that really strikes me about Kevin Gates is that he's such a lovely human being as well. Like I bumped into him at the Whole Foods in Austin, Texas during South by, and he had no issue with taking a picture. And he, he was actually talking about, I don't know what stand we were next to, but he was explaining what what superfood and why is good for you. And I was awesome. just like, this is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I wish someone Gates. documented this. That's definitely Gates. The person that Kevin Gates is in interviews is the same as that person he is in real life. True. He, he just big brother. You know, big brother. I love you, big brother. I want you. I want you to have this record, big brother. You know why they call it superfoods? I got you. <laughs> it just goes crazy. That's that's Gates. Though. Like he'll talk to you about deodorant. He'll talk to you about cell phones. Like why well, new cell phones are bad and you should just get the old ones. Like they're tracking you. It's like all right, we know, we know, bro. They track you. We get it. Well, yo, come to think of it, Kevin Gates would be dope to have his own show of that he sort. He of- definitely. Gates should have his own podcast. He's just, I, I would, I would let her, I would literally listen to a Kevin Gates podcast. It might be one of the first podcasts I listened to since, I don't know, man. <laughs> you don't listen to podcasts? I just want to hear Gates' like philosophy on life and like what he thinks about like the color orange and sh- yeah. just random. Sh- uh, yeah. That's the reason why I listen to Brilliant Idiots. I used to be big into like the Tax Stone podcast and all that. Tax Stone was dope. Yeah. He would just, it would just be real at all times. And it always be like some real life, like lessons and knowledge. And I feel like in podcasting, especially coming from like um, the rap world and all that shit, like there's kind of stuff like that missing. It's just like now about battles with like old heads versus young heads about like, why do you like this music? We like this music. Well, I don't know why you like it. Who, who cares? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Do something, you know. Tax, yeah, tax zone. Um, I like the brilliant idiots for that, for, for that, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. dynamic and just like free just tax, like no, free, free tax, man. Let my man tax free, man. For sure. Have you have you checked Bodega Boys podcast? Nah, I haven't. A lot of people tell me to check out the Bodega Boys podcast, though. Uh, you know what? You actually touched on it just now about like the old he- old heads versus the new heads. How often do you come across the old heads? In, in your in your journey as a as a new age entrepreneur every day damn every every single every single release we do they're like this is terrible why would i listen to this this isn't real music it's just it's just a juice world rip off artist like we could go sign an r&b female artist i'm like this is a rip off of juice world it's just like all right bro. they just anything wow. that we touch they just gonna hate so it's just like the more they hate it the more i know i'm doing my job right no, absolutely, man. You need someone to be flipping, you know, the script and, and changing the the soundscape, really. Otherwise, we'll just be stagnant it's forever. The same, it's the same shit, just in history. Yeah. It's repeating. Yeah, and and speaking of Juice World, um, also XXX, two artists that you've worked with that uh, mm-hmm. had an untimely death. Um, what kind of action has been taken within the community and and within your friend groups to to ensure that mental health is is still at the forefront? Of, of conversations I know that you know you seem like a you, you seem like the guy that just wants to get the job done it's like it's it's kind of like no excuses let's keep going let's do this but how often does do you have to kind of bring things back to to earth and and be like yo guys like sometimes you gotta you've, you've got to hit the brakes and make sure everyone's all right mentally you know um do you have those kind of conversations with your team? I mean, I mean, yeah, of course. But I feel like mental health is something that like everybody deals with, like every single person at, at, at some level. So just like mm-hmm. I know that it's kind of like death. You know what I mean? Like you can't sit there if someone dies. Like some people just don't want to be talked to about it. You know what I mean? It's like everybody grieves in their own special little way. So it's like if somebody brings something up, then obviously it's like a warning sign. It's something to talk about. But I'm not like I dealt with depression for many years I, I tried to kill myself many a times you know what I mean but it's like yeah. uh, I don't I, whenever I'm going through this I didn't want people to be like hey man everything's gonna be all right or because it's like bro you don't know what the fuck I go through you know what I mean so it's like um just giving people their space and letting people like uh just figure themselves out is like the most important thing and if they need the support and help you know we're obviously here for it but yeah, I feel like whenever you start playing around in people's heads, it's just like you don't know how they're wired. You know what I mean? You could trip something up or even on top of that. It's just like you're really it's like uncharted territory. You know what I mean? You got to give people yeah. that space and just respect their privacy at the end of the day. Like if they're going through something, that's just on them. You can't really be the one. Of course, you could be a, like a friend of them and be there for them. I'm not saying don't be, but it's just like a lot of these times you just got to let people just deal with this stuff on their own and just be a friend and give them your support. You know what I mean? 
Uh, being the creative entrepreneur yourself, you have so much talent and content going out on a daily basis and being made on a daily basis. At what point is Taz Taylor going to cap like, and be like, okay, I, I, that's enough. I can't handle anymore. Like, I can't be taking on any more, any more talent, but it's part of your DNA. So what was the cap? <laughs> <laughs> there isn't one. And people don't believe that when I say that, but um, I have right now like 40 producers. Um, I have like 10 artists. So it's like, um, I get spread thin a lot, honestly, like, but it's just like the strong survive and the people who put forth the effort are the ones I'm going to spend the time on. And that's just, I feel like I'm, my advice is here for everybody and I'm here to give everybody game and help them get to the finish line as efficiently as possible. But you know, not everybody wants it as bad as you do. So it's like, you got to get people once again, just like the mental health thing. Like you got to let people figure themselves out. And like, whenever they're ready to come around and work, that's on them. But in the meantime, my train don't stop. Like I can't, I, there was a long time where I, I got really depressed just trying to put my energy into people and wanting to see people be stars bigger than they wanted to be stars. You know what I mean? Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Just can't, you can't do that. So it's like, all right, I really f with you. I like your music. I like what you're doing, but whenever you're ready, I'll be here. In the meantime, I'm gonna go work on this artist or this producer. We're going to go do this project. Like, let me know when you're ready to work. And, when, and, and, if, and if 100 people are ready to work at the same time, then you won't find anybody that's more dedicated to making sure I squeeze the most out of every single person to get the most out of them than I will. What's the cooling period? <laughs> like when you realize, oh, OK, this person's not cut out for this. I'm, you know, they, they, they're not too proactive about their career. Yeah. How, how much time do you give them? I bring people out here all the time on trial basis. Like I'll listen to a person on a Friday night and be like, yo, I kind of like this song. And not nice. out here Saturday morning, and then Jeez. they won't they won't never talk to me. They won't never meet me. They'll just be like, "Yo, what's up? I'm Taz. What's up, bro? Here's the studio. Let me hear what you make." And if they make it past like the trial sessions and everything like that, and people once people, my producers are coming to me, and my A and Rs are coming to me, being like, "Yo, this kid's fire, bro." It's just I can't deny it at that point. You got to do something. Yeah, with it. yeah, yeah. Just keep it moving. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, what's the worst uh, way to to get your attention? Uh, <laughs> um, I've had people literally just buy flights from like Chicago and like stalk what studios we're staying at and like show up like yo I'm here to see uh, Taz and they're like Taz isn't here I'm like oh, are you sure I've seen on the stories here oh but, god yeah you have to be careful for real like, people have literally shown up and with, with like flash drives or like uh, went on Google Maps and try to like watch every live that I do and see where I live and then look up the address and send like a, a long ass note with a, a flash drive in my mail. Like mm -hmm. people, people have literally uh, leaked my, like a, a my old house, a uh, DoorDash driver leaked my address on like a YouTube comment or something. And like some, oh, fan, no. some fans literally came and tried to shoot a music video in my front yard. Yeah. Just to get your <laughs> like, attention. Like, and like my girlfriend at the time was like, could y'all leave? And they're like, well, you don't like our sound. You don't like our vibes. I'm like, no, nah, this is creepy. No. Nah. Yeah. It's borderline, obviously showing tenacity, and you really want this, and borderline like, no, nah, this is like they just they just have this dream in their head because they hear like Big Sean talking about, oh, I was rapping for Kanye, and they're like, oh, I go rap for people, but in reality, you're putting people in an awkward standpoint. Think of like the the few ten people that might have gotten signed in history off of like rapping for people, and think about the millions of people that got like you could go find a million videos of people rapping for Kanye, like. People waiting outside restaurants, just, yo, lyrical, spiritual, miracle, like just going crazy. And Kanye's like, yeah, man, that's dope. Keep doing your thing. Like, it's just not, it, it's unsolicited. People don't want to listen to it. No, if, for if, real. If, that... if it's good music, we'll find it. Trust me, we'll find it. We, like, I know just speaking from my, I have literally employees that I hire that on a day-to-day -day basis just look for new artists and new hires. Nice. And I've, I've brought people out here that have under a thousand plays or under a hundred followers. Like, I don't care about yeah. stuff like that. I'm just more so like a fan of the music. And I know that one, if the music's good, everything else is going to come. You know what I mean? Yeah. And one final question, of course, you've come through the, the tight beat era and that was the market that you really, that really broke you yeah. into who you are now and the, the, the ecosystem that you built. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the, um, these marketplaces that are are cutting through now like beat stars like timberland has, has even launched his own one it's called beat club yeah. what's your take on all of that um be honest come on now you want me to be honest hell yeah they suck 
I'm listen. This would be the only time I get cocky, and I say this out of like because I'm a, I'm a historian with this. Shit. I built Beat Stars. Like I'm the reason why people use Beat Stars. Beat Stars paid me money to get them like get people to go in there. You know what I mean? Like to see everybody doing this shit and everything is just they're vultures at the end of the day. They just try to take from the producer community. They don't know what they're doing. I mean the Timberland and everything. I don't know about the Beat Club, but I know like the other ones. I just don't really I don't really rock with them. And I just, I, I, I respect any producer out here getting it, but I don't like people trying to take advantage of the producer community or producers in general. And uh, I, that, I guess that's what internet money is built on is the fact that we stand up for other producers. So, you know, that's just, I don't really rock with it. I don't really fuck with it. So, so on that note then, would you be willing to, I mean, there are resources out there where people can learn like tons of information. Sometimes I, I'm, I'm astounded that people don't know certain things because they're really there. They're on the internet. Like you can read, read the small print. But would that be, I mean, would that be the kind of legacy that you want to leave? Like make sure that the, the producers coming after you know exactly what their business is, is, is yeah, behind the scenes? I mean, that's, that's always like, I feel like since I got in the game, like people talk about the online type beat game, right? And like how, um, oversaturated it is and all this, right? I feel like we're partially to blame for it being oversaturated because we mm. were telling people how much money we were making on there. And if I wanted to keep it for myself and not tell producers, like, look, you can go make money this way. Like, you can go make half half a million a year if you really work yourself hard enough. Like, if we didn't ever do that, it wouldn't be that, it wouldn't be that crazy right now. But we did that because we just show people it's possible at the end of the day. And that's the yeah. thing, like making music, even like Lemonade, like people don't understand that. Like now we're showing people like, of course, like DJ Khaled and all these other producers have done it, but we're internet producers. And now we got a big hit record. Like, why, why can't you go have a big hit record? Or if you're a producer, why can't you go get with another artist and go make a record and you own it? You know what I mean? Like, it's just about showing producers that we could do anything we put our minds to. And then, so for them with their, their careers or anything like that, like advice or we always give out tips and we just want people to be informed at the end of the day. There's never going to be a producer union or producers like unify because there's too much like undercutting going on for that to actually be like a respectable thing. I get but, you. Um, just, you know, leading by example and showing people that you don't have to do bad business. You could do good business. If there's a hundred producers on a song, a hundred people got the same cut with their enough money. There's never, there's never like, Oh, well I did, I did a snare and a hi hat. So I deserve more than someone who just like did a hi hat midi like it's the same thing you worked on the thing you worked on it you, you get thrown in the pool of whoever else is on it we get equal splits so it's just nice. about the business and taking care of each other and showing like leading by example pretty much you'd advise every producer to get a business manager or, or a lawyer what, what would be the first choice yeah, I mean, to a, have in your corner uh of course uh well there's a bunch of different roles there's a manager there's a business manager there's a lawyer and then, you know, everything else that falls in between there. The first thing I would do, like, I'm, I'm just speaking from my experience, is get a manager. Like, I, I my manager, Bird, he wakes up every day. And, like, if I'm in the hospital or sick or if I'm having a bad day, he's still going crazy to make sure that, like, the, the engine's running. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And yeah. the lawyers, they make sure the, paper, the paperwork's taken care of and everything's done. They won. Just, you got to, it's, it's all about a solid team. You know what I mean? Like, you, you could be the best player in the NFL and be on the worst team. It that's just, true but this right here is just we're the best team and we got the best players and we do the best business so now you just absolutely the, you know the the results from all that coming together there you go you heard it from the horse's mouth internet money records before the storm out now amazing project definitely take time to listen to it you'll, you'll like you'll definitely like a couple of tracks um thank yeah you. definitely thank you so much for joining me yeah, like it's been such a pleasure it. And I uh, appreciate you, Sarah, for having me. Molly over here. Say what's up to Molly. <laughs> Hi. Molly, Molly's been, <laughs> been tell- listening in. <laughs> yeah, Molly's been telling me how crazy you've been going over there with everything and like supporting and showing support and everything. So I just want to say thank you. And uh, no I doubt. appreciate it. And Internet Money appreciates it. So yeah, you're a real one. You're honorary Internet Money now. Look at that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I've moved. I've moved from free bands to Internet Money. Sorry, there you go. Future. There you go. <laughs> Moving up. Moving up. <laughs>